Messiah, Majesty, Messiah, Majesty. Yeah. Every day, your praise will come from me, for your faithfulness was me. May Zion Majesty, every day, your praise will surely be a scene of joy for me, our Savior. Your praise will come from me, for your faithfulness towards me. May Zion majesty, every day, your praise will surely be a scene of joy for me. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, the power, the praise, the maker of the heavens and the earth, and the seas and everything that in them is. Lord, unto you are we gathered, reveal secrets to us, teach us. May our hearts indict a good matter, and may we leave this class better than the way we came. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Champions shout fire. Fire! Shout Ururu, shout Muzozo, shout Mafura, shout Ongsio, 
We want to thank the person of the Holy Spirit for the privilege to be here. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And also want to thank our most holy father, Papa Joshua Aguila. Say we love you, Papa. We love you, Papa. Well, she comes with three people and say it's so nice to see you. Amen. Say to the person, welcome to church. Amen. Say to the person, welcome to church. Welcome to church. All right, stand to your feet then. Walk up to three persons and say, Welcome to church. Welcome to our Sunday school. Praise God. Let's take our seats. Praise God. Praise God. So, we are looking at how prophecy works. It's very important you know how prophecy works. You know, because God wants to be able to talk to each and every one of us. He wants to be able to communicate to us. And all God is just asking from you and I is the willingness to obey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Be someone who can obey Him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even when we all came into Christ at different stages of our lives, we were called children. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Children of God. Yes, sir. And Ephesians 6, verses 1 says, Children. Obey your parents in the Lord. Yes, sir. Not your parents who are Christians, but your leaders, your ministers. That's what yes, they mean by parents in the Lord. And all God is asking is your willingness to obey. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 19 says, If you are willing and obedient, mm -hmm. yes, sir. see, if you are willing, he didn't say if you are willing and respectful. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, they will tell you they have a lot of respect for God. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of respect for ministers of God. That's what God wants. God doesn't want you to respect His ministers. He wants you to obey them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When it comes to respect, it's a form of regard you show to someone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it is something you do, not necessarily willingly. Mm -hmm. It is something you do under compulsion. Yes, sir. Because of the person's authority. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or the person's social place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But when it comes to obedience, it's something you do delightfully. Yes, sir. That's all God really wants. Yes, sir. He wants you to delightfully obey Him. He says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. He said it. He said you will eat the goodness of this land. So, even that scripture, Isaiah chapter 1, verses 19, it tells us something, therefore. That there are some people, they have never eaten the goodness of any land. That means any place they find themselves but God says, look, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the goodness of the land. Yes, sir. And that is why if you go to Isaiah, sorry, Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. We had read previously in Ezekiel 36 where the Lord said, I'll put a new spirit within you, take away the stony heart and put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues. Now, God wouldn't have done that initially, but because he was dealing with the people who were not willing to obey him. Yes, in that Ezekiel 36 verses 26. But I want you to go to Ezekiel 37 because after the Lord spoke to Ezekiel, in Ezekiel 36, verses 26, I'll put my, I'll take away the stony heart, give you a heart of flesh, 
and put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status. In chapter 37, the next chapter, we began to see how the spirit within the prophet Ezekiel began to operate. Yes, sir, yes, sir. No doubt, some preachers have said on the grounds of the new creation realities that when you give your heart to Christ, God took away the former heart and gave you a new heart, mm -hmm. a brand new heart. Well, if you did, why do you still remember the things you did in the past? Why did he even say renew your mind? Why is he telling you not to conform to the world? Because you can't forget. Even God will never do that because that will affect social interaction. Think about it. You became a Christian. So God gave you a brand new heart. How about the husband you married for many years before you went for the crusade and you gave your heart to Christ? He didn't come, but you went for a crusade. You gave your heart to Christ. God gave you a brand new heart. And then you came back home and said, who are you? What are you doing here? Because at that point, you lose recognition. If God gives you something, a brand new heart, even your children, you will say, who are you? That's true. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's true. Because that word heart there is mind. Yes, sir. Why would God want to do that? God will not do that. But you can begin from that moment you became a Christian to decide the things you want to let go and the things you want to keep and the things that you think you need that you need to improve on that's how it is so it's not as if God is going to take out your mind and give you a brand new mind no it will affect social interaction even in church we still have social interaction after service don't we say hello to all them? When we said earlier, shake hands with someone now, that's also social interaction. Yes, Imagine the person asking you, who are you? Do I know you? Where are you from? What is your name? That will not be good at all for social relationship. Amen. Okay, now, let's show you something. In Ezekiel 37, I'd like you to see something. So that the moment the spirit began to work, the moment the spirit had access to the mind of Ezekiel, it was easy for the spirit to use Ezekiel the way he wants to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The way he wants to. Yes, it's yes, easy. Yes, sir. It's easy. See something. Ezekiel 37 verses 1. It says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley of dry bones. Why do you read really like your accountant? Let's read now. Again, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the now, did you notice that he said something about a carriage? Mm. Mm. Yes, sir. He says, the hand of the Lord carried me out yes, sir. into the spirit. Took me inside the spirit. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go too much into mm. that, but there's something I tell you. The Bible talks about being in God and God is a spirit. Yes, but if this was more or less like uh, a minister's class we can say something about God putting his hand on Ezekiel's head picking him up and putting him inside him. Because notice he said he carried me in the spirit of the Lord. But it's a different class today. Now, I want you to see the interaction between the spirit and Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord was upon him. 
and the Lord carried him and began to talk with him. Now, the, 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 I, I want you to notice something in verses 2. He says, And he caused me to pass by these the dry bones round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and they were very dry. So here, he's telling you, in the realm of the Spirit, there are valleys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And in the realm of the Spirit, there are dry bones. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, imagine if someone physically is spiritually living in a valley. Mm. Mm. Because he's telling you here, in Revelation chapter 21, verses 10, it tells us there are mountains in the spirit. Yes, sir. Ezekiel now is telling us there are valleys in the spirit. Yes, sir. And we told you the realm of the spirit looks exactly like the earth, like the physical world. Because what you have in the physical world is a replica of what you have in the realm of the spirit. But there he is talking about something. He said there are dry bones there. Dry bones. How did those bones get there? Okay. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Can they live? That's one thing. You see, God doesn't just want to give you his spirit so that you can prophesy. God likes to engage your intelligence. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So you see, God does not like stupid people. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God will never use a stupid person. Mm. Yes, sir. God likes an intelligent person. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's amazing. God, the Lord God now, is asking his prophet a question. Mm. Can these bones live? And the guy didn't say, Lord, is impossible. No, it's not possible. Because he knew the one asking him the question is the one who can make all things possible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so he gave God a very respectful, intelligent answer. Yes, sir. You think about it today. If God had asked you that question, what you would have said? You would have said, oh, no, 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 Lord, it's not possible. Come on, these are dry bones. There's no skin at all, no marrow, no nothing. Ah, these are... You give God even a thousand reasons. The guy just made it easy. He said, Lord, only you know. <laughs> only you know. And it's amazing here how God spoke to him. Now, this is actually primarily the skeletal structure of how prophecy works. First of all, God likes to talk to you. Mm -hmm. I, I like you to say that. God, God likes to talk to me. Say to someone, God likes to talk to you. Say it like you mean it. God, God likes to talk to you. Say to someone, God, God likes to talk to you. I've not told you what you should say. Man. Say to somebody else. He wants to talk to you. God wants to talk to you. Make sure you look at someone. God wants to talk to you. Tell the person, believe me. Believe me. Now, I didn't tell you to smile and tell the person that. Even though you should, but... But be serious. Let the person take you serious. I'm serious about yes, what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Tell the person, God wants to talk to you. God wants to talk to you. Look at someone in the eye and say, God really wants to talk to you. God really wants to talk to you. He likes to talk to you. Including those watching us too. So, here... Yeah. You are looking at a conversation between mortality and immortality. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And immortality is asking a mortal man, can these bones live? And he said, Lord, only you know. 
I mean, is it think about your experience right now? God took you into the spirit to see dry bones. If God can do that, mm-hmm. is, is it will tell you honestly? That's why I give God the answer I gave him. Mm-hmm. Only Him knows. Mm-hmm. Because I'm surprised I'm here. Yeah. Because the Bible says the bones were very dry, very dry. Yes, and God is asking, can these very dry bones live? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And He's asking the Lord, only You know. And God didn't say, man, I'm disappointed. I thought I, I was talking to a, an intelligent person, even though he likes intelligent people. But here's the point. Ezekiel, the priest and prophet, his answer was a proof of submission. Mm. Wow. That's the thing. God does not like to talk to people who argue. Mm. It is true you are intelligent. But the way you argue your opinion sometimes. Meanwhile, the one talking to you has been able to do things you have never done before. Can I pray for you to pass your exam? Well, if you want to, how do you think you will pass? I'll just read my books and I know I'll pass. What makes you think that it is only reading that can make you pass? What if I begin to tell you the answers that they will ask you in the exam? But the point is that don't, don't be a tough cookie that people can't talk. So which means God watches closely how we interact with each other. If you are someone that people are always avoiding due to the fact that people can't really talk with you, you can be sure God will not come close. If you study the character of the life of Ezekiel the priest, he was somebody who was very, very accessible. The elders of the city and the temple, they were always in his house. They like to come and talk with him. He was someone that was friendly. He was, he was, he was open. Not that he would engage in gossip and all that, but he was somebody that people could easily talk to, even though he was their pastor. Do you understand? Yes, and, and this also speaks to those of us who are leaders too, the way we relate with people. Because God is in people. He sees how we relate with people. Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of these ones, you are doing it to me. So, here, we need to start improving uh, our social interaction. I recall the challenges I faced some years back, uh, which made me practically lose almost and most of the things I had done in the past, was the fact that I could not manage social relationships. And it's unfortunate I had to learn the hard way. Because I did recall at that period, even God himself paused in communicating with me. Until when he told me on my way to Georgia, by Virgin, um, around Virginia, he told me when you get back, uh, close, leave that venue, close the church there. And that's how we left Mamoraya. And he did not talk again till some months later he told me we were holding church in the house, in my house. And then he now said, go to plain feed. And then did not talk again. Why? God is very sensitive about the way we interact. And it's something you need to put into into strong consideration the way you interact with people. You need it. You need it. And if you're a leader, 
you can't be a touchy person because God uses people around you to test whether you are someone he can really talk to so if every conversation gets you angry you can be sure God will give you space now God is asking Ezekiel do you think these bones can live and he said Lord you know now let's see something the Lord did again he said to me read verses 4 I'd like you to read verses 4 see how he said it one to go again he said unto me prophesy upon these bones stop 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 pay attention to me stop you see that's it again that's how God Where you stopped earlier, read it again. Verses 4, the first line. One to go. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon the bones. Again. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones. Again. Can you read it loud again? Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones. Now, if God is telling him to prophesy. How was he going to do it? Because God is telling him, prophesy. And we're looking at how prophecy works. So, how do I prophesy? The next line will tell you how it is done. What's the next line? And say unto them, only dry bones, Hear the word of the Lord. Did you see that? Yes, sir. That's prophecy. God must tell you what he wants you to say. Yes, sir. He must tell you what he wants you to say, not what you think. Yes, sir. Prophecy has nothing to do with what you think. It has nothing to do with what you think is right to be said. If I come to you now and I say, don't you think I can make you? I can make you great. You may say, what kind of pomposity is this? What kind of arrogance is this? Only God can make one great. But what you don't know is that you were a fool. First of all, will Brother Ossi naturally talk this way? Does Brother Ossi talk this way? Does Brother Ossi say to people, I will make you great. I can make you great. The God you said is the only one who can make one great. You just spoke to him. That's why Brother Ossi told you, I can make you great. That was God actually saying it. I was quoting him verbatim. Yes, I can make you great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you thought it was Brother Ossi. Mm -hmm. Notice here. He said, prophesy. So, prophecy is an action. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, but this is how it will work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say what I say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, then it will work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not what you suggest or think. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know where you are getting Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, I may not come and say, Thus said the Lord. Mm -hmm. But if what I said is something that is probably too incredible, mm -hmm. or something that you say it is out of character, mm -hmm. then you know this is not a person. Mm -hmm. If you've been able to confirm that this guy, God uses him, or this yes, lady, yes, God uses her, yes, she, each time she says something or he says something, it comes to pass. God is using this person. Yes, yes. And then the person now walks up to you and says, Something incredible, yes, sir. something that can blow your mind, mm -hmm. and yet you still limited it to oh, it's just the one saying it. He's assuming the air, 
He is arrogant. Only God can make one great. But look at the one talking to you. Oh, it's just for us. I've heard about him. He's that arrogant. He has not even made himself great yet. That's the reason why you need to know that it is not Brother Ossi talking to you. Sure. Brother Ossi was just quoting verbatim what the Lord told him to say yes. to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I can make you great. Yes, sir. No, only God can make someone great. Yes, but thank you anyway. Mm -hmm. All I just need from you is your prayers. Oh, man. Notice Ezekiel shows us how prophecy works. Yes, sir. The Lord said, Professor. Okay, I'm going to prophesy. In the prophecy, this is what you will say. That's what makes it prophecy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not what is nice to say. Yes, there is a force that tells you when to prophesy. It brought him to a place of dryness and now told him. It is time to prophesy. Now, Ezekiel said, Lord, only you know. And God said, now, I will use you to prophesy so that you will know. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't get it. Let's close. Yes, the Lord asked him, can these bones live? Yes, sir. He said, Lord, only you know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Only you know. Yes, sir. Okay. God now said, I don't want to be the only one who knows. I want to use you to do it. Yes. So that you will know. Here's the point. How do I know, for instance, somebody like me now, I'm reading Ezekiel's writing. How do I know as a prophet when God wants me to prophesy? It's very simple. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When God begins to express concern about a thing. Mm -hmm. For instance, if God is expressing concern about Russia, mm -hmm. then just know there's a prophecy coming for Russia. But now, how do I know what God is concerned about? I already showed you, actually. I just didn't say anything about it. Now, Ezekiel started by saying the hand of the Lord was upon him, and he brought him to a valley. How did Ezekiel know that this was a valley? He was observing. All right, let's start the service. I don't think you are getting this. He was observing. Who said the bones were dry? Please answer me. Let me talk to you. I'm talking to you now. These ones are not interested. Let me talk to you. You are the only person I'm seeing in the spirit. These ones are not interested. Okay, so he brought him to the valley. Then he saw dry bones. Who said he saw dry bones? Ezekiel said it. See, they are still not interested. It is you. Mr. Alex, you are the one I'm talking yes, to. You are the, yes, it is only your voice I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ezekiel was the only person who said he noticed dry bones. Yes, he said he saw the yes, dry yes, bones. Yes, and he observed that the bones were what? Very dry. Yes, yes, so what Ezekiel was looking at that was dry yes, was what God was not discussing. Yes, 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 yes. So which means that when a prophet is focused on something that is bothering him or that he's trying to understand, God begins to speak. That's even how a prophet knows. God is about to say something. So you see, prophecy is not necessarily targeted towards something you love. I can personally be concerned about something now. And the Lord will begin to say something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because that thing has taken my attention. Yes, and he wants me to fix it so that I can, he can get back my attention. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ezekiel was looking at the dry bones. Yes, and he observed that they were very dry. That means yes, 
Even God who brought him to the valley, he ignored. Yes, That's why God is asking now, okay, fine. This thing that you are concerned about, yes, let's deal with it. Let's wow. fix it. So a prophet can begin to know it is time to prophesy when he's concerned about something. And he's not faking it. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's beginning to express concern. This thing. Why is this thing? Not? Why is it? And God knows he has to solve it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But now God is not saying, you will be the one to solve it. Yes, this is how you are going to do it. Yes, These yes, bones that you are looking at, yes, yes, this is how you are going to solve it. Yes, prophesy. Yes, if you are going to prophesy, this is what you will say. Now, he said, verses 4, again he said unto me, prophesy unto these dry bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Ah, Ezekiel will say, I am the Lord. No. He was quoting the Lord. The Lord told him, quote me verbatim. Now, look at verse 7. Read the first line. So I prophesied as I was commanded. That's it. That's how prophecy works. I said exactly the same thing as he told me to say. I did not add my own. So, I prophesied as I was commanded. What is that? That's the word homolodia. Which is the word confess. And homolodia means to say the same thing in agreement with God. So prophecy is a confession. To say the same agreement. To say the same thing, sorry, in agreement with God. So God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Then the prophet comes and says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So I say, Are you? You always travel all the time. But the prophet just to, told you something that you know God, only God can say. Yes, sir, yes, I will sir. never leave you, nor forsake yes, sir, yes, you. Then yes, the prophet sir. comes and says, I will never leave you, nor forsake yes, sir. you. But you see, the reason why you have a problem with the prophet is because the prophet, instead of quoting the Lord verbatim, he comes to say, the Lord says, he will never leave you, nor forsake you. In order to just pacify your understanding. Mm. But that's even the reason why you will not believe him. Mm. Because he came and said, the Lord said. Wow. Wow. But if the prophet comes and says, hey, look here, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Then you should know. Yes, sir. This must be God talking. Yes, sir. But because he did not say, the Lord said. He will never leave you. He. In our next class, we'll continue. Blessed be God. Talk to the Lord. It's time for new things. It's time for new things. See, I just said what he told me. Uh, you don't want it. Let me have. It's time for new things. Glorious new things. Glorious new things. Let's sing that song, Glorious God. It's time for new things. It's time for new things. It's time for new things. New, new things. That's what he said I should say to you. It's time for new things. It's time for new things. The movement in your, eh, madam, the movement on your roof, the movement on your roof, God is stopping it. Amen. The Amen. movement Amen. in your house, the roof, yes, sir. there's a movement. Yes, sir. There are things, there are cats, mm -hmm. and God is saying He's stopping it. Amen. Amen. Because they've attacked that roof, 
that the next rainfall will remove it. So God is fixing it now. Amen. Does it make sense to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glorious God, beautiful King, yes, the Lamb God, I bow before Stop. See, this right side, this, I'm talking to you now. What's this side? Your right side. The enemy wanted to attack your right side. You are free. That, that's why there was numbness. Do you understand what I'm saying? There was numbness. But now, lift your hand now. Do like this now. The Lord is fixing it. Glory God. Lift the hand. Lift it. Something will fall on it now. cats they were witches God has removed them Amen. see there's still a movement you can feel it right yeah there's still a movement praise God praise Hallelujah. God alright let's start our service we're dismissed